Hello, Pioneer fans, and welcome back to the Shoe Sports Report. We have exciting news for you. Two Sacred Heart teams clinched spots in the Northeast Conference Tournament over the weekend, so we are going to get right to it and tell you all about it. Now, Kyle, let's start off with the women's volleyball team. They sit atop the NEC volleyball standings. Why don't you tell us about it? That's right, Diana. Women's volleyball had yet another clean sweep this past weekend. With two regular season conference matches left to play, the Pioneers dominated Fairleigh Dickinson Saturday afternoon in the Pitt Center. Shu allowed only 34 points in the match, defeating the Knights in three straight sets, 25-9, 25-13, and 25-12. The win moved the Pioneers to 11-1 in conference play, clinching at least a share of the regular season title. Anna Gonzalez made history in the first set as the senior picked up the 158th service ace of her career, breaking the previous program record held by Courtney Kidd. Sarah Krufka hit 565 in the match with 15 kills en route to her second Molten NEC Player of the Week nod. Liesl Nellis also got recognized on Monday, winning her second straight Molten NEC Rookie of the Week award. Sacred Heart picked up a non-conference win Sunday over UMass Lowell 3-1. Again, Krufka led the way with 18 kills, hitting 33%. The Pioneers return home for two big matches this weekend against Bryant and Central Connecticut. Stick around after Sunday's match with the Blue Devils as the Pioneers honor their seniors Sarah Krufka, Anna Gonzalez, Allison Riggs, Tori Kemper, and Maddie Lozier. Diana, Men's soccer has had a sensational three-game win streak in NEC play to close out the regular season. It's been quite impressive. Yeah, that's right, Kyle. The Pioneers are now postseason bound, and they haven't been since 2011. So the men's soccer team was on the road for their final game of the regular season against conference opponent Fairleigh Dickinson. It was a huge game for both teams as the winner clinched the fourth spot in the NEC tournament. Sacred Heart was able to get ahead early in the game. Thanks to Shaquille Sanchez's performance, he stepped up, scoring both goals to give Shu the 2-0 lead. Freshman goalie Robert Shereen added to the Pioneer win by saving three shots from the Knights, picking up his second shutout of the year. This 2-0 win was huge for Sacred Heart, who hasn't made the NEC tournament appearance since 2011. But now they'll move on to the semifinals to face St. Francis Brooklyn this Friday. Be sure to follow the Pioneers live on NEC Front Row at 3 p.m. Now we're going to send it over to Aaron, who's sitting down with the women's basketball head coach, Jessica Mineni, for a season preview on our basketball edition of the Coach's Corner. Thanks, Diana. I'm here with the 2016 Brenda Wiley Coach of the Year winner, Jessica Mineni, uh, to get an inside look at the Shoe Women's basketball team, who are in their preseason favorites to win the NEC. Coach, you had a huge year last year coming off a slow non-conference start to winning the NEC regular season title. How is that experience going to help this team going forward this season? Well, I think we learned a lot of really valuable lessons at 2-9. and nine. We were actually 2-10 and ten at one point, and to be able to rally and come back and win 16 games and have a 20-win season was exciting, and I think it just challenged us in a lot of different ways to be more cohesive and to be better teammates. I think that experience has helped give us a great foundation of trust and energy that we can continue to have as we approach this opening 2016-17 season. That's important. In addition yeah. to adding uh, reigning NEC Player of the Year, Hannah Kimmel, coming back, uh, you have a great three seniors coming back, Kelsey Castro, Adesha Williams, and Shelby Hickey. Uh, can you talk about what expectations you have for your core four uh, this season? I can. They're a pretty special group. They've been with me for four years, um, Kelsey Castro for three. And I've been very fortunate and blessed to be able to coach these kids and to have them really buy into our system, our culture. They have really been ambassadors for the new era of Sacred Heart Women's Basketball. And so they're very special to me and to the team and the program. And they lead us. They lead us very strongly and, they, and with great conviction to having a championship mentality and being relentless and I think with their leadership this year, you know, it's do or die for them. They know it's on the line, and they do not want to leave here without a gold ball. And you talked about your core four starters returning, uh, but you have big shoes to fill with Alyssa Tarsi graduating. Yeah. Uh, how are you going to fill that role this year? What you didn't get to see last year was Kat Haynes. Kat was out for the entire year. She had a torn labrum in her hip and wasn't able to get back on the court, and she's worked tirelessly in the offseason to be ready. 
And we've recruited two freshmen, um, Jenna Saletti and Madison Cheatham, who are also going to give us really good minutes. So I think from a post standpoint, we've actually been able to have a really good um, consistent carryover, having lost both Alyssa and Larray. They were pretty big factors in our post, but I think our new post players are ready to take on the challenge and be what our team needs them to be to have balance on the floor. You, run, you always run a high offense, high energy offense. Uh, what can fans expect when they come out to a game this year? So we love our offense. It's a player's offense. It's up tempo. It's fun to watch. I, they can expect the same things. You know, we're going to shoot a lot of threes. We're going to attack the basket. We're going to play fast. And I think, you know, we just have to be more consistent with how our three ball falls a little bit. Um, but it's going to be an exciting style of play. And the energy from the fans for us is huge. It really gives us momentum. It really gives us that great energy that we need to propel us forward. So I think, I think it should be a, a really fun, exciting season. Lots of fun stuff to see in the games. All right, with that being said, you kick <laughs> off the season this Friday against uh, Crosstown Rivals Fairfield yes. in the annual Crosstown Classic. Uh, what has this renewal of this rivalry meant to the program and both schools? It's so much fun. It's such a great opportunity for some bragging rights in the town of Fairfield, where we have two universities, two, two great universities. I think ours is better, but <laughs> um, it's a little biased opinion. Um, but I think the rivalry has been awesome. It brings us uh, an opportunity to showcase what we've prepared for for the last 40 days uh, leading up to this game. And the kids get really excited about it. The fans get really excited about it. I know it's a really great community kind of clash with the fans as well. So hopefully we'll make them proud and we'll finish it out this year in our first uh, big challenge of the season and then keep it moving. Well, thank you for joining us today, Coach Minetti. Uh, be sure to head over to the Webster Bank Arena this Friday as the women's basketball team takes on Fairfield in the Crosstown Classic at 5 o'clock. We'll be back with Diana in the Coach's Corner for a men's basketball season preview. But for now, here's Gino Canello with the, this week's Update Corner. Thanks, Aaron. What a busy weekend it was in shoe sports. I'm here to get you all caught up in this week's installment of the Update Corner. The Sacred Heart women's ice hockey team unleashed the offense in this weekend's series sweep over Lebanon Valley College. Shu put up a staggering 79 shots and exploded for five goals in the second and third period to take home the 5-0 victory Friday night. Five different pioneers each found the back of the net in the victory. They continued their firepower into Saturday night as they put up six goals in the first period alone. Junior Taylor Moreland had a sensational game recording a hat trick to go along with two assists. Jaden Casting recorded 12 saves on the day. The Sacred Heart men's and women's fencing teams open up their season at the Big One Invitational on Saturday. The men's team earned two silver medals at the event. Dante Cento took home silver in the men's epi, and Tyler Endy earned the other silver in the foil. Samantha Abbott tied for third in the epi to take back a medal for the women's team. Abbott cruised through pool play going 5-0 and would beat top seed Olivia Weiss of Vassar in the quarterfinals 15-13 before falling to Taylor Nunn of MIT 15 to 12 in the semis. The Pioneers are back in action on Sunday, November 13th. The Sacred Heart swimming and diving team picked up a big 179 to 119 win over Holy Cross on Saturday afternoon at McCann Natatorium. The Pioneers set seven pool records on the day and improved their dual meet record to four and one, matching last season's total already in the young season. It was a pair of freshmen leading the way for Shu as Lauren Somers set three pool records in the 50, 100, and 200 freestyle. Kim Hyland also set two pool records in the 500 free and 100 backstroke as a part of the 400 medley relay. The Pioneers look to stay hot as, the, as they host Assumption College on Saturday, on Saturday. The Sacred Heart men's ice hockey team skated to a 2-2 tie at New Hampshire on Friday night. Shu got on the board first thanks to, two goals, to a two-goal second period with freshman Austin McElmurray picking up his first career goal off the touch pass from Jeff Carroll. The Pioneers answered again just 36 seconds later as Alec Butcher found Jordan Manello for the open shot. The Wildcats answered with two goals in the third, with one coming with 28 seconds remaining in regulation. Nathan Perry had a career high 35 saves on the day. Sacred Heart returns home as they welcome Atlanta hockey foe Robert Morris for a weekend series. The Sacred Heart men's wrestling team opened up their 2016-2017 season at the Dragon Duels over the weekend. Shu fell to Gardner-Webb 36-6 in their opening match. Junior Tim Johnson kicked off the match with a win at 125 pounds. Shu picked up their first victory of the season in their second match of the day as they defeated Shippensburg 30-15. Johnson was one of five pioneers to pick up a win in the match. 
The Pioneers host Drexel for their first home dual meet on Friday night. The Sacred Heart women's rowing team wrapped up their final fall season with a pair of meets. At the fall Metropolitan Regatta, the Pioneers novice 8 plus team finished second in their heat with a time of 7 minutes, 52.2 seconds. The novice B team won their heat with eight, a time of 8 minutes, 41.6 seconds. The rest of the team competed in the head of the Hooch Regatta in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Junior Sarah Poirier bested the competition in the women's lightweight singles race. She took home gold with a time of 20 minutes, 50.8 seconds. The Open 2 team of Kelly Brown and Danielle Varley placed 7th with a time of 21 minutes and 45 seconds, earning the boat a spot in next year's race. She will race again in 2017. Check back next week for the latest updates in shoe sports. Back to you guys. Thanks, Gino. The Sacred Heart football team was in New Britain, Connecticut this weekend, where they faced in-state rival Central Connecticut State University. Fifth-year senior quarterback R.J. Noel cemented himself in shoe history on Saturday with 233 yards through the air to break the shoe career passing yards record held by Dale Fink. Noel has now a total of 8,869 yards and has become the second active FCS quarterback to have 100 total touchdowns, including 80 passing and 22 rushing TDs. Noel helped lead his team to score 35 points this Saturday, but CCSU pressed their offense to stop the Pioneers. It was a tied game going into the second quarter, then Central took the lead into halftime up 17-7. Shu then answered back with two touchdowns in the third, but so did Central. Sacred Heart made it a three-point deficit and had an opportunity to win as they forced Central to a fourth down in the final quarter, but a penalty kept the Blue Devils alive. Within the final seconds, Noel launched a Hail Mary for the win, but he fell short. The Pioneers fell 37-35, to and they're going to move on to play Duquesne in Pittsburgh this Saturday. Now, the women's soccer team made the trip out to Loretto, Pennsylvania for their NEC tournament final contest against CCSU. That's right, Diana. The women's soccer team made the trip out to St. Francis U for their first NEC tournament trip since 2012 to take on two-seeded Central Connecticut. The Pioneers had the first semifinal of the day on Friday. Central Connecticut got out to an early lead as Carla Jackson connected on a cross from Emily Hogan in the fourth minute to go up 1-0. The Blue Devils struck again on a tally by Lauren Casanova-Diaz in the 40th minute. The Pioneers continued the fight, putting up seven shots in the first half. CCSU added their final goal in the 68th minute by Danielle Pierce. The Pioneers closed out the season 8-6-5 and 5-1-2 and in the NEC. They return a majority of their team in 2017. Diana will be sitting down with head coach Latina in a special men's basketball preview of the 2016-17 season. Thanks, Kyle. It's a pleasure to have Anthony Latina, men's basketball coach, back in the corner. And, guys, we're going to talk about some basketball today. So, Coach, the team really lost some three key players last season, but you have uh, Davon Barnett back. How's that? Well, you know, we're trying to build a, a solid program and, and good programs, lose good players every year. And, uh, you know, but we feel like we've been able to replace them with returning players who have improved and, and bringing some new ones. So we obviously had Davon sitting out for us last year who was – who we were expecting big things from. Obviously, injury uh, set him back, but hopefully he can pick up right where he left off. And we also have Quincy McKnight coming back as an all-rookie, rookie-of-the-year type player. So, uh, you know, like I said, good programs lose good players. That happened certainly with us last year, and hopefully we were able to fill some holes, uh, not only with recruiting, but with uh, the improvement of some returning players. Yeah, and talking about Quincy McKnight, NEC rookie, um, what, how has he progressed since last season and how will his role change this year? Well, the interesting thing with Quincy is, you know, uh, people compare him a lot to Kane, you know, who was a player of the year for us last year, but they're very different players. And so what we've really tried to stress with Quincy is just be the best you can be. Don't try to be uh, something you're not because he's a more of an all-around player, offense, defense. He can, he can help you in a lot of different ways. And so we just want him to play exactly how he played last year, just be a little more efficient. And we probably late in games will call his number a little bit more. So uh, that, that's really all we want from Quincy. Is the biggest thing is, is don't change your game. Just be better at what you've done. And, and it's been pretty good so far. That's great. And there are a lot of new faces on the team this season, some that have D1 experience. How much of an impact do you expect them to make this season? Well, we're hoping a major impact. Two of those players are uh, Charles Tucker and, and uh, Joe Lopez, 
two junior college transfers that were at Division One to start. Uh, we're very excited about both of them. Both of them will play major minutes for us and have a major impact on our team. And if they can perform uh, like we project, we think that's going to be a, a big positive for us. So uh, two, you know, two great kids, hard workers uh, that really fit our team and our team culture, and are going to make us a lot better. Uh, and also, hopefully, some of the other returning guys that, that have, have worked hard to improve, guys like Sean Hone and, and Chris Robinson. So uh, hopefully we're at the point now where we've established ourselves as a program where when you lose good players, you, you replace them with younger players that have gotten better and, uh, you know, and, and, and recruiting as well. And we feel we're very pleased with where our recruiting is at. And uh, hopefully those guys, along with Davon, and we also had Mario Matasovic sitting out, um, who we think is going to be very good, uh, along with the returning guys like Sean, Hone, and, and, and Mate, uh, Bowie Vats, and uh, Chris Robinson, that we'll have enough depth of talent to pick up where we left off. Right, and now with all those changes, how is the team chemistry going to be heading into Friday's opener? You know, we're real excited. That's the one thing I'm, I'm most excited about. You know, one of the things last year is uh, we did some great things in conference play, and we had a chance to legitimately win the league at the end there. But we really didn't play um, with the type of chemistry that I generally like our teams playing with. And I think adding Charles as a pass-first point guard, and I think we're going to be a more of a share-the-ball type of team. Where we actually, you know, obviously we had a dominant player last year who, who, who was great for us. But I think we're going to be a little bit tougher to defend because we can get points from a lot of different areas. And that's the type of team that I prefer to coach, and that's the type of team I want our identity to be a team that really shares the ball, and hopefully you'll see a different league score on different nights, and who our go-to guy is going to depend on the game. So uh, I hope that makes us more versatile. Uh, I, love, I love our team uh, energy. I love our team chemistry right now, and I love our makeup. So I, I think um, you'll see a team that's fun to watch, that'll share the ball, and you'll see different people step up. So our depth of talent, we believe, uh, is the best it's been in a while. So uh, hopefully that will translate to... Uh, continued progress. Right, and with that depth of talent, what is it going to take to make the NEC tournament for the third consecutive season and ultimately uh, win it? I think the biggest key is, is that we're, that we, I think this team understands how we want to play. We understand what our identity is offensively and defensively, and now we just have to do it better. We, we you know, I really feel uh, we are where we, where we're at a place right now where we're all pleased how we're playing. Uh, so we don't want to make any changes that we just want to do it better. And we want to keep improving. And that's what good teams do. And that's what we were able to do last year. Is we got better as the year went along. Now, we had to deal with some injuries early. And that was part of the reason we struggled a little bit early. But we improved. And so um, what I hope uh, what you see on Friday, obviously, other than a victory, is that it's very clear what our team identity is and how we play. And now the challenge is to continue to believe in that, everyone on the same page, and get better. So... Uh, we're very excited. This is a, it's going to be a tough non-conference schedule. We always we we always don't do ourselves any favors, especially the first six. But uh, what we're really focused on is is a very good Fairfield team, and uh, hopefully there'll be a great crowd at, at the Harvey Yard Arena, and, and our, our fans and our community does a great job of turning out for this game. And you know it's it's where Fairfield plays their home games, but. Uh, whenever we play them, it always feels like a sacred heart home game. So we're hoping it's like that again on Friday. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you very much, Coach Latina. Good luck this Friday and the rest of this of this season. And guys, be sure to head down to the Webster Bank Arena Friday night for the Crosstown Classic as the men and women's basketball team kick off their season against Fairfield. Join us next week for more Sacred Heart highlights for all of us here at Shoe Sports Report. Thanks for tuning in.